the food, cheap food. It was 60 cents a day to feed the inmates. Now it's gone up, gone up to a dollar and 20. But I'm gonna start charging them uh, in a couple of months. You're gonna have to pay only a dollar. You know, I won't rip them off too much. It'll be a dollar. Let them pay for their food. You know, you got all these prisons and country clubs in California. I wrote a letter to your governor. Never got an answer. But he was kicking, what, 10,000 people out, no room? And I said, I'll be glad to take your inmates or give you some tents, and you can put tents up. There's plenty of room. Or I said, if you don't want the tents, there's a lot of surplus of boats or ships. Why don't you put them on the ships, on the boats? Or why don't you reopen Alcatraz? That would be good. So don't kick them on the streets because you're overcrowded. That's not right. So I don't know where they're at. They're not going to come here, the inmates, I don't think, right? Probably don't know where this place is. but uh, <laughs> So that's... That's some things I want to say. The only thing I, another close to my heart are animals. Uh, so um, 20, uh, 2000 started a unit to lock up people that abuse animals. Mahatma, Ga Mahatma Gandhi said you judge the morality of a country by the way you treat your animals. So I lock them all up. I don't give them a ticket, put them in pink handcuffs, which by the way match the underwear and throw them in jail. I don't care who they are. Now I got a very intensive case going. I just uh, left Phoenix, but uh, 28 dogs were put in a little house and they all died, 21 died. So uh, this is a tough one to prove. A little politics involved in this one, but we'll do the right thing. And when I did uh, for, you know, open up my uh, new unit, I needed a place to put the dogs so I dumped all the inmates out of one of our uh, air-conditioned jails, <laughs> threw them in the tents, and we put the dogs in each cell. We got 200 cells, and <laughs> wait a minute. I don't double bunk dogs, I double bunk inmates. So every dog has its own cell. I'm an equal opportunity guy, open up a cat area too. And all the inmates take care of the animals, very nice. Uh, in the cat section they painted a heart that said Sheriff Joe's cat house. So, and then the horses can't fit in the cell so we put them in the tents for the inmates uh, to watch them. That's my big thing on animal cruelty. And I take it very, very serious. And, they go to jail if they abuse any animal. Now we get into illegal immigration, which everybody seems to be talking about again. Uh, and I, uh, I was the uh, director of the U.S. Drug Enforcement in Mexico City, Central, South America, had offices in Panama, worked with Noriega, Argentina. I was head of the DA in Texas, covered that border head of DEA in Arizona, cover that border, and then sheriff 22 years, we're only 30 miles from the border, so I think I know where the Mexican-U.S. border is. But <laughs> nobody asked for my advice, the media won't even say my background. I don't see politicians ask, they all want my endorsement. In fact, we got a governor's race going, Everyone has come to my office multiple times for me to endorse them, which is kind of interesting. Here I'm being investigated uh, by the Department of Justice. Obama started it 100 days after he took office uh, because I was enforcing the federal laws, which the government swore in 160 uh, my officers and gave me the authority to do that. Evidently, we were doing too good of a job because they wiped out all my authority. That was six years ago. And they're still floating around. 
Now I have court monitors. Maybe I ought to be careful what I say because if there's TV, they'll probably run to Phoenix and, you know, but I don't care. You can say whatever you want. Uh, so, so, so I got monitors. You think I worry about it? The judge will hear this next week. Doesn't bother me. So, you know, I've been monitored by the White House, monitored by the Department of Justice, monitored by ACLU, monitored by the media, monitored by my wife of 57 years. And so I'm going wor to worry about a few more monitors. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing my job. And so I didn't run for governor because of you guys. I'm going to blame you, and, a, and a lot, even though you're not in Maricopa County, because I spread the word around the U.S. and I happen to be the poster boy for uh, uh, the White House on this illegal immigration problem. So I turned down the governor a month ago because if I ran last month, I'd have to resign the next day and I wouldn't be here talking to you. Uh, and I wouldn't uh, be able to carry on. So I sacrificed being the governor to continue being the sheriff. And so, so I think actually the governor, uh, the sheriff's more important uh, to the governor, read your civics book uh, and see where the sheriff stands next to the governor. I, I think I'm, the sheriff will beat out the office of the governor. Actually, in uh, Arizona, uh, the county I'm in is two-thirds of the whole state anyway. <laughs> and so I'm really the governor of Maricopa County <laughs> plus Arizona. So. So, uh, you know, 